mad at you right now? Are you a Final Fantasy fan and are you looking for something different to play this summer? Are you responded, yes? Well, do I have a little video for you? In today's episode, I want to talk a little about why I'm excited for August 27th and maybe after watching this video, hopefully you'll be just as interested. I want to talk about a little GameCube gem that was a bit of a pain to play the way they truly intended it to be at the time, but in today's world where we could take full console game experiences on the go using just our mobile phones offers so much more potential making what was once a complicated multiplayer game ridiculously easy to play with friends and not just in the same room but now online and with crossplay capability. So that's actually a big step in compared to times where we have to use link cables and Game Boys, could, the, the amount of money that it costed to play this game, it was not a fun time for your pockets, let's just say that much, but they found a way to make it work now, so it's gonna be great. With all of that being said, let's actually jump into why Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered should be on your list of games to play this summer. Harkening back to the good old fantasy days that the series was birthed from, Crystal Chronicles doesn't shy away from giving you a magical world to journey through as you take on the sights of many of the game's diverse towns and dungeons in search of a magical substance called Mir... 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 Mm. Crystal Juice? Yep, that, that's what we're gonna call it. I've already declared it. Once you get enough droppings of this magical substance from this, like, crystal tree, your character travels back home with its companions at the end of the year festival in order to feed a giant crystal that's in town, and it, it helps keeps the miasma away. This, the miasma is just like, it's this substance that sucks all the life from the land and it fills it with monsters, so it's bad stuff. Don't, don't smell the stuff. Don't, don't inhale it. It, it, does, it does something to you. Some, some weird stuff. Not good. Not good at all. There's so much charm packed into this little world that it feels like baby's first MMO to a degree. I'm not sure how many people felt this, but for me, it kind of felt like how Final Fantasy XII felt like a single player MMO experience. This game kind of feels the same in essence. And honestly, thinking about it, if the world was actually a lot more open for you to literally go through and explore, like having an actual world map, I think it would feel a lot closer to that. Especially when you really think about it, your party technically aren't the only ones exploring the world and collecting the uh, the mirror, the crystal juice, <laughs> and fighting against the miasma. They're not the only ones, so it could it could have been like that. But I guess I don't GameCube, unless you're Fantasy Star Online. If the world of this game was a living piece of art, then the music would be a rich, smooth voice that really helps separate this game as its own thing from the rest of the mainline games. And this game definitely has some nice tracks that you'll come to love for many, many years. It has this like tribal-esque folk music vibe feeling to it. I think that's I think that's the best way to describe it. But in the end, it sure makes for visiting the same towns, dungeons, boss battles, and even the world map all a treat to the ears. So that's a plus in my book. The combat is decent. It's decent stuff. It requires some strategic placement to make sure that you can kind of get in and do what you need to do, like attacking and casting magic and well ultimately survive compared to a lot of other games that play nowadays it doesn't really feel like anything too grand but considering what it was trying to do for the time it came out i think it works pretty well and it's something that looks to still hold up true for the remastered version to me the real fun lies in trying to cooperate with your friends as you traverse deep caverns while trying to figure out well whose turn is it to carry the chalice trying to work with them in the heat of battle while you guys try to put together these magic rings that you use to cast magic only when you combine them together or stack them on top of each other rather they create powerful versions of spells like Fira, Kiraga, Haste or Holy. Something to know before going in is that you actually need to find these magic orbs in each level in order to cast basic magic like Thunder, Cure, Rays or some others. Something else important to know is that you can't cast life on yourself. So before you want to charge in all Leroy Jenkins style, why don't you equip yourself with a Phoenix Down so that way when you do die, it brings you right back to life so you can kind of charge back in there and do it all over again. Now this does take up one of your free command slots, but it is a pretty helpful note to consider. Especially in the event where you're playing with friends and you're the one with the raise spell equipped and, well, you kind of die? You don't want to be that person at the end of the day. It's not like some super flashy hack and slash game. But I think it's one fun multiplayer Final Fantasy game that I don't think you want to pass up on. 
I think it's also worth mentioning that depending upon how you perform at the end of a dungeon will net you some points that is used to determine who gets to go first in picking a reward at the end of the level. What kind of reward you ask adventurer? Well, these rewards are how you upgrade your individual stats, gain additional heart pendants, unlock more command slots, and lastly you can add these special rings that allow you unlimited access to that specific type of magic from the start of each stage so you don't have to worry about going around finding any of those orbs. So yeah, definitely make it an effort to snatch these bad boys up when you're playing the game. The game isn't by any means long, but it does have B play value to it because I feel like it's something easy to just kind of sit down and dive right in and even if you just want to play for like a level and do some exploring. And if you ever feel like you want to switch things up a bit or try to introduce somebody new to the game, you can always try playing one of the other races, especially since stats and unlocks are locked to that specific character that, well, had that upgrade. You don't have to worry about it really getting in the way of trying out one of the other characters and seeing what their abilities are and what it has to offer to the game. So don't be afraid to try something different. I think it's also worth mentioning that I'm going off the fun memories that I've had from the GameCube days. So like I mentioned earlier, aside from the new and improved ways to enjoy the game with friends online and apparently local multiplayer might be back, the crossplay feature will allow you to play with friends on not just Nintendo to PlayStation 4 but on mobile devices like Android and iOS as well. So there's going to be a handful of ways to play this game and experience all the new features they've added like new boss battles, upgraded visuals, voice acting, I don't want to be nitpicky but hopefully it's good voice acting. But yeah, all of that stuff and all the other new additions that they've added to the remake. Remaster. Sorry, I just, I guess I just can't get Final Fantasy VII Remake out of my head. But I mean, in regards to waiting for something like the remake, I've been waiting for years and hoping that Square would consider bringing this game back for the Wii U. Especially when you stop to think about the setup you needed for the GameCube to play the game, right? When you think about the fact that so many people had a 3DS, I, I don't see why it wouldn't have been hard to just connect from there to the Wii U. I mean, look at Smash 4. It worked for that game to a degree, but whatever, it's happening now, right? So in the coming months, it'll make for a nice addition to all the Final Fantasy games I already have on my Switch. But yeah, so what do you think? Did I convince you on buying the game? Was it already in your cards to play? Or maybe you don't care. Let's chat about it in the comments. And also don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for all things Bear Boy. And if you want to support the channel even further, then consider joining my Patreon like these rad peeps below. If you join, you'll get access to some very nice goodies. <laughs> uh, but hey, thanks for watching today's episode. It's been a fun one and there's a lot more to come from here. So I hope to see you in the next episode. See you later.